It's Richard Charlesworth, who's played 139 internationals for Australia, and uh, the vice captain Jim Irvine, who's played 136, and the other one with over 100 internationals to his name is David Bell. Some of the interesting selections would have been Nigel Patmore from Australia, who recently was selected and performed very well in Malaysia in the recent uh, tournament there. The other interesting selection might be the goalkeeper Pratt from Tasmania. The Indian team, the most exciting players to watch I'd suggest would be uh, Jalaluddin, one of their very, very quick forwards and perhaps uh, number eight Fernandez. Uh, but we're ready to get it to get the game started. Chip forward. And the Australians on the attack almost immediately. And as I mentioned, 6-1 the score in the Asanda World Tournament last December. Will they repeat it today? What do you think, Malcolm? Well, I think there's every chance. In fact, uh, in Malaysia recently, Australia did defeat India 3-1. But anything can happen in international hockey. And there's that player you mentioned, Jala Luden. Uh, he made some sensational breaks in the World Tournament last December, and he's easily the player to watch as the corner's taken. Not a good one, though, and Australia come away with it. <coughs> Quickly taken free hit. Australians combining well, and there's Charlesworth in the centre, and a, a chance on here very early in the piece. A good save, though, a brave save by, by the, goalkeeper. the Indian keeper, James. Saved a certain goal, and uh, with 35 minutes each way, a goal at that stage in the match that could have been very important for the Australians. Batch setting up uh, the play out wide there on the right. Steve College has replaced the injured Terry Lease uh, in the Australian team. Certain, certainly switching play a lot in the opening minutes of this game. As the Indians struggle to clear, and they do so, but that's a fairly ineffective ball downfield. And the Australians will restart play. The breeze coming up but quite a deal now. Do you think that uh, will have any bearing on the outcome? Oh, I wouldn't think so, uh, really, Peter, at this st in this particular game. Rajinda. Saheed off the foot, I think. A free hit to the Australians. And umpire Pitt is going to warn one of the Indian players for knocking the ball away after the, after the awarding of the free hit to Australia. It's a green card, which is just a warning. Bell. Cross field to Davies. Not a good pass. It's cut out by Samaya. There's that chip forward again. We could expect to see that quite a bit today as the Indians break right. Can't manage to find the centre of the field and uh, the Australians, again, clearing from the back. A lot of space in midfield, but Charlesworth couldn't control it then. And it's back with the Indians. A neat little bit of play there from Vanit. Still with Vanit. Plugs it forward. Another harmless ball. headband forward it goes obstruction there and Colin Batch who'd uh, overlap from the inside right position over to inside left Score, scoring opportunity for the Australians wasted on that occasion though Colin Batch a little uh, eager offside that's with top no Australians again through Hazelhurst Hazelhurst, in fact, was the player in the last uh, tournament in Melbourne in, in December that really did dazzle the Indians with some of his brilliant stick skills. And it'll be interesting to watch today to see how they handled him. Jinder only goes as far as Charlesworth. His pass, not a good one. And clubbed forward again by Vanit. One feels they'll have to be a little more constructive if they're to trouble the Australians 
this afternoon. 35 minutes each way here at the State Hockey Centre under overcast skies and it's a fairly cold day here in Melbourne. It could get a bit colder too. Zafar, plenty of experience with it's a the brilliant Indian ball. captain. The, the real danger with Indians is that they're, they're so very, very quick on the breakaway and that's what the Australians will have to watch today. Zafar again. And a free hit this time to the Indians. In the centre of the field. Cut out nicely by Hazelhurst. Plenty of room for Hazelhurst. Batch is not finding the uh, kind of space he'd like up front there at the moment. It's wide now again to Hazelhurst. Batch is in the centre. Can he find him at Hazelhurst? He could go all the way. Batch is there as well. And cleared away desperately by the Indians through Samaya. And they'll have a chance to advance it further downfield now. Free hit and top no. Try to penetrate that strong Australian back line. It's held firm so far. And they're working at cross field now. College sets up Bill. Well, and here's Batch onto the ball. He's showing a lot of paces. Batch, where's someone in the centre? Back it goes to College. A bit of hesitation there from Romeo James, but he finally cleared it, although. It has been an infringement. Well, a lot of credit for that move must go to David Bell. Received the initial pass, overlapped, then sent a superb ball through to Colin Batch. One of the features of David Bell's play at right half for Australia is his ability to, to uh, come into the, into the forward line, and he's got very, very good stick skills. Another interesting selection today is the selection of Roger Smith at centre half back for Australia. Roger's the brother of the, uh, the former great Australian player, Trevor Smith, who played well over 100 internationals and was somewhat of a surprise omission from the Australian team early this year after the national championships in Perth. Well, there's a bit of attention for the Indian goalkeeper there who hurt himself kicking that ball away soccer fashion. It was effective uh, to the point that Australia didn't score, but then they have a real chance here and the uh, conversion rate of penalty corners reasonably high these days. Well, particularly with a hitter like Craig Davies, who really can give that ball uh, quite a crack. Most of the teams now that are uh, highly ranked in the world have this this knack of uh, or the art of stopping the ball on the reverse stick side, which you'll see here. Stopped by Hazelhurst and driven, but another good save from James and just wide. A little unlucky there, but it was a good save from Romeo James, 24 years of age, in the goals Bad luck for the for Charlesworth. He just uh, got a stick to that, but just nudged it wider than that. Here it is Here again. It. <laughs> well, the goalkeeper looked like he was almost giving him a free shot there. Shahid. Cavalho. Couldn't control it correctly, and plenty oh. of room for Batch, and he, in turn, fails to control. A neat little chip forward sets Batch away again, and he moves pretty well for a big man, but he couldn't clear the Indian defenders on that occasion, although it's still with Australia, through Nigel Patmore. He's robbed, and the Indians come away with it. Well, that seems to be a, a fairly useless ploy that the Indians are, are using at the moment. Well, I think it's early in the game. They're probably... Uh, trying to turn the Australian defence by poking the ball through on this AstroTurf but certainly they've misjudged a few of their early passes. So possibly an unsettling effect rather than a sound tactical oh, manoeuvre. I, I would think both sides are a little bit nervous and uh, probably the Indians more so. David Bell. Brilliant tackle by Irvine on that occasion. 
Some fairly heavy pressure in the centre of the field as the Australians attempt to take it out wide again. But now it's top no, saving the situation for the Indians. And again, we see the ball harmlessly head towards the Australians' line. And David Bell will bring it out again through the back. Back to Bell it goes. The inspiration of many Australian attacks. David Bell, a glorious ball in. And out wide it goes to Batch. Well, very early on, it's it's obvious that the Indians are going to have to do something about the attacking skills of David Bell. Their left uh, wing must work back on him. <laughs> Davies to Charlesworth. Will he go all the way? still going it might just be a bit too far for him did well to force a corner there what can the Australians do there's quite a number in the center easily outnumbered by the Indians though and they come away with it hard deep showing some fine skills and wide to the danger man Jala Luden seemed to clip it with his foot then enabling the Australians once again to mount an attack. Hazelhurst can't find his man and the Indians centre field now. Could have almost been a useful ball through to the captain Zafar with the Shahid dummying. And that's with Vineet, Shahid. It's a useful ball actually by Hazelhurst. This will stop. The Indians at this stage don't seem to be having uh, any sort of system midfield. They're taking a long, long time to settle down. Now, Charlesworth. College to Charlesworth. Tries to beat his man. An unsuccessful attempt. So the pressure off for the Indians once again, nil all here at the State Hockey Centre. The neat clearing and we've had just over 10 minutes of play here in the first half, 35 minutes each way. No extra time if the scores are level at full time. It's the first of four internationals, one today obviously, the other tomorrow here coming to you live on ABC television and two next week in Perth. Jim Irvine. Heinz Charlesworth and Batch, another dangerous run into the circle he goes. Neat stick work. Robbed though at the last minute and he's achieved his aim. Penalty corner and another chance for the Australians. Great play then by yes, Batch, he's making a lot of was, runs. But but at the same time, a lovely ball through from Charlesworth, but certainly once Colin Batch got the ball in that situation, he was obviously playing for one thing, and that was the penalty corner. Because he knows what, what a good hitter Craig Davies is. Hazelhurst, Davies. Took a deflection, fortunately so for the Indians. It wasn't a particularly again. good push out on that occasion. The Indians were able to get out to the, to the hit. Umpire Ian Pitt from Australia. Charlesworth with very few options. He blew him for lifting the ball up into the player on that occasion. It's constituting dangerous play. Hard deep, wide it goes to Zafar. Working the left side well off the feet of the Australian defender on that occasion in a corner should be or a free hit yes a free hit for the Indians just outside the circle and uh, one of their first real opportunities to put the Australians under some pressure and they have achieved a penalty corner and I think they're a little bit lucky there for a start they took the hit uh, outside the circle and, and it was only about two yards outside the circle and both players are supposed to be uh, five yards apart however the umpire let it go on that occasion Vanit with the hit, a good drive too, and a great save there. Oh, the young Australian keeper. Pressure still on. Yep. 
quickly taken. Shahid, damaging run. Australians played it well though. This is College, Charlesworth. Quickly in though was the number 12 hard deep for the Indians. Cleared forward again. Almost came off for batch then. Searching for their danger man, Jala Ludden. Now it's the Indian number eight, Fernandez. Wide to Jala Ludden. by Fernandez. And the cross a little too powerful. Well, the tempo of the game has certainly increased uh, in the last couple of minutes, and I think both sides are now warming to the task. Construction by College. Shahid, a wall of Australian defenders, managed to find its way through, did the ball, and now it's forward to Hazelhurst. Licker to take his man on unsuccessfully. Back out wide it goes to Jalaluddin, right side of the field. Got Safar working the left side and Jalaluddin working the right side, and they're the two big danger men for the Indians, and the ones the Australians will have to watch. Hazelhurst. to get on with the game. Immediately forward to Charlesworth. Sensed that Batch was on, but he wasn't quite in the, the right position, although it's still with Batch. A powerful frame bursting forwards. Still with Batch. Not too many Australians in the circle, though. Should he have happened to cross the ball? Well, Colin Batch again there was uh, quite content to win the free hit and enable his, uh, his teammates to get up into a scoring position. of bodies there and the decision going the Indian way so we've had uh, about 15 minutes of play first half still no score the last time the two countries met was uh, in the Malaysian tournament in Kuala Lumpur and that resulted in a 3-1 victory to Australia so not as bad as the 6-1 thrashing they received uh, last year Certainly, Australians proving superior to the Indians over the last series of international matches they've played between the two countries. Fernandez. Fernandez Indians. looking dangerous on a number of occasions out there for, uh, for India. Very, very clever stick skills. Indians are appearing keen to take on the man in the early stages Well, that, of the that's game. always been a feature of the Indians' play, their, their willingness to, to have a go at the defenders, and that's what makes them so dangerous. <laughs> Australian foot there for a penalty corner to India. It's the last time, in fact, that India beat Australia, I believe, was, uh, was way back in 1978 in the World Cup, in India? when uh, India beat Australia 2-0. Now it will be Vanit with the drive here on the edge of the circle. Fairly slow out, but it wasn't a bad drive. I think the ball was moving there. The, technically, the ball should be stopped uh, before the shot at goal. It's a good ball again by Bell. Charles was showing his willingness to take on the man as well. And a glorious ball cross field. Hazelhurst couldn't find Batch then, and that was a, a certain opportunity for the Australians there, with Hazelhurst finding a great amount of space in the centre. Well picked out by Charlesworth. And now it's the Indians back on the attack again through Zafar. A midfield exchange. The Australians cannot clear it. Now they can. Roger Smith. There's that chip forward again. Not an effective one on that occasion. And Shahid wide to Zafar. And he'll take on the man here. And he should. The options were few though. It was a good piece of defensive work. Chance for the Indians to see if they can maintain a bit of pressure on the Australians as Fernandez dangerously into the circle and a gallant tackle there by Craig Davies. 
Yes, Craig Davies, one of Australia's great players, recently won the first the best award in Perth, uh, the Olympians medal. A rather solid frame too then. He's a big boy, Craig. Not too many arguments from the Indian players today. You'd, you'd imagine who'd be coming out on top in those, I think. Jim Irvine and Davies in the central defence for the Australians and a solid combination and loads of experience. It's Charles Worth again robbed. Possibly trying to do a little too much on his own as Shahid, another danger player. We haven't seen too much of Jala Luton at the moment, but Shahid and also the captain Zafar showing their skills. As yet uh, to be rewarded with a goal. We haven't seen any score in the match so far. The first of two internationals here in Melbourne at the State Hockey Centre. It's still nil all. And we've had almost 20 minutes of play in the first half. Shahid, a, a bumping run there. Converged on by two Australian defenders and quickly taken back with Shahid. It is again off the foot, though. And now it's with Rajinder. Across to Hardeep, back to Rajinder again. A policeman back home. Certainly that wall pass wasn't directed at well. That's the ball's now with top node. Well read. And well played too. Penetrating piece of attack then from the Australians and just wide and plenty of danger on the left-hand side of the field then. Good play by Hazelhurst. Just laid the ball off at the right time for Padmore. We might just have been outside the circle then, Padmore. It's very interesting to see. <laughs> Irvine to Bell. Lovely work from Bell. Well read though by Shahid. It's Bell and Shahid having a battle. Right it goes to Zafar. Shahid took his eye off the ball then and it's with Hazelhurst. Back with Shahid again. Try to work it in close and Hazelhurst again with plenty of space and that could have been a very nice ball. Batch offside was offside again. though. Batch and Hazelhurst combining well so far. Up front for the Australians. Davies cross to Irvine. Hazelhurst controlling it and it's with the Carvalho. And back to the Australians again. Right on halfway. The third man obstruction there. Another player ran between the, the two Australians. Wide ball then and the chance for the Australians. Patmore and just wide. He had Ooh, the Indians complaining it was off his foot and it was too. Patmore trapped that with his foot but umpire Pitt missed that. Well he Here had plenty of time. He possibly should have made a little more of the opportunity. Well, it was a fairly acute angle. In fact, it wasn't a bad shot when you look at the replay there. But it would have been interesting to see what uh, sort of performance the Indians would have put in had had that gone in the goals. The neat. A speculating ball might come off this time as it was with Fernandez, but now it's back with Rajinda. Finds Shahid, unable to control it. In midfield, Roger Smith and back there, Hazelhurst. And now the Indians clear left side of the field now. Shahid and Zafar attempting to clear the ruck. And instead, it's the Australians through Charlesworth up over halfway. A solid stick exchange there between College and the Indian defender. And we still had no score in the game, although some... Uh, bright entertaining hockey not rewarded with a goal Charlesworth Charlesworth Zafar skirting the left hand flank and uh, just over 12 minutes to go in the first half as we see on the computer time clock here at the State Hockey Centre 12 minutes to go, nil all, India and Australia. ABC Sport coming to you live from Melbourne, right round Australia. 
and Irvine's been trying those uh, those chip shots over the top, but it's very hard. Once it hits the turf, it tends to skid away very, very quickly. to put the Indians back down in the Australian Territory where they'd like to be, I'd imagine, to get on the attack. Jala Ludden still unable to control that ball and we haven't seen the best from Jala Ludden today, although... He's been well attended, in fact, by Trevor King out there for Australia. Solid defensive work going in at both ends of the field, and uh, yeah, that's been a feature of the game so far. It certainly doesn't look at this stage as though we're going to see a repeat of last year's seven goals in the final uh, now. Fernandez trying to bullock his way through three Australian defenders. Jala Ludden trying to do the same to get past Trevor King. Can't do so. No, it's still the Indian advantage. <laughs> the speculating crossfield ball could have been dangerous. There was no one there though. Charlesworth off the foot of the Indian player, allowed to go on as the advantage is played. And Bell looking for college. And that's the halfway line there in the centre of the picture. Fernandez, Charlie Luton just slipping there for a moment. Couldn't quite get onto that crossfield wall. Hazelhurst. Third man of obstruction once again. Irvine, he's found Hazelhurst on a number of occasions and he does so again, but Hazelhurst is robbed and quick to pounce on that was Davies. Back with Hazelhurst again. What can he do with this one? Left side, it's to Patmore. What are the options for Patmore? Not too many as the Indian defence gets back and has plenty of time to cover up. Now the Australians on the attack once again. Into the circle it goes. It takes a deflection and comes a high off an Indian defender, the number six, Cavalho. Dangerous uh, play there, so that's a penalty corner to Australia. Yes, I believe the Indians have got to pay more attention to, to Peter Hazelhurst, number seven for Australia. He's been getting the ball too much uh, unattended midfield. They're, they're looking after Rick Charlesworth quite well, but uh, they must pick up Peter Hazelhurst. Now, can the Australians open their account? With eight minutes to go in the first half, Davies clubs it and over it goes. It's good running once again by number five for India Samaya. He's got out to a couple of the corners uh, that Australia have had. A host of Australians in the centre. Through it goes to Bell. Tucks it into Batch. I don't know what Batch was thinking of then. Possibly trying to slip it round the defence. Didn't come off. Still, the pressure's on the Indians at the moment as they attempt to clear their own 25-yard area. Punched forward to Jalaluddin, well controlled, back inside. And they're clearing left where they've looked most dangerous at the moment. Shaheed showing great skills on the ball and sheer weight of numbers in the Australian defence. Ended his run. Well played, Charles, with. Picked the ball up brilliantly from defence then and turned his man well. Irvine. Oh, glorious Good. ball then to Batch. Will he have a shot? It goes wide to Patmore. Patmore, a big chance. It's still there for the Australians. Hazelhurst a drive, but it's just wide and the best chance for the Australians so far with Hazelhurst in the end having a shot that went just wide. Grand work by the goalkeeper, but a magnificent play in the first uh, part by Irvine to get the ball through to, to Batch. Now we see Hazelhurst just not balancing himself correctly for the shot. Colin Batch almost got a stick onto that actually. He must have thought he was a bit short of time and there he was. The Indian players weren't wasting any time in getting out to him. Davies 
A long penetrating ball once again. And there's a chip forward by the Indians. Chipped on by Zafar. Bell has too much pace. Well robbed by Zafar, but he's climbing on him. Out to Zafar again. Yes, a challenge. An illegal challenge there. And just outside the circle, the Indians with just about all the Australians back. And Hazelhurst having a good game so far, clearing it out to Patmore. He's lifted that up into the Indian player, that's why India's got the hit. Six minutes to go here at the State Hockey Centre in Melbourne under overcast skies. And it's nil all in the first of the two internationals here in Melbourne between Australia and India. Batch, plenty of room. Charlesworth's making the run. It goes to Charlesworth. There are plenty of Indian defenders. Wide, it goes though to College. And well read though by the Indian defender. An unlucky obstruction uh, in umpire in pit blue on the Indian left half there. Charlesworth leaves it for Bell. Back it goes to Irvine. Looking for Pat Moore. Hazelhurst is still there. And a free hit to the Indians. Bit of a chase for Bell and Zafar. And Zafar to Shahid. Shahid looking to go all the way. Not finding the man inside the circle though, and that of course is the key with Hazelhurst. A long run downfield, and Hazelhurst uh, offside having a great again game. by uh, Colin Batch. Good run by Hazelhurst. <laughs> Charlesworth. College's right side and Patmore left side. Charlesworth thinking about going all the way here as he had the Indian defence backpedalling. Off the foot though, unfortunately. And another good attacking position. Comes to naught for the Australians. Unfortunately coming off the foot of Nigel Patmore, the youngest player in the Australian team at 22. No doubt... Uh, all the experience will serve to advantage when the Olympics come around. No doubt about that. Batch bustling his way through again. Cross field, plenty of chances as Charlesworth's in the centre. So is College, robbed though by the Indians. And the free hit goes the Indian way. Good play then, again out wide by Batch and Charlesworth. Well, Australia creating the best of the chances, there's no doubt about that. But uh, there's been some resolute Indian defence, particularly by number three, Vineet. At left fullback for India. Davies. <laughs> and taking a bit of a tumble. More Colin Batch is of... giving them a bit of trouble in the centre there. It's a un fairly unusual position to see Colin Batch in at centre forward, but he's certainly leading around and uh, creating a lot of trouble for the Indian defence. More in the the style of a, a rugby uh, union, rugby league or Australian rules tackle that one then. And we'll be showing the Sydney Rugby Union later on. But it's, uh, the Australians on the attack now. College into the circle once again. And that's a penalty corner and a real chance for the Australians to score with just over two minutes to go before half time. And could this be goal number one? For the Australians. Good skills by College there to work his way into the circle and force that penalty corner for Australia. Well, let's hope that Craig Davies can get a clear shot away at the moment. Uh, all these other corners have been run down by the, the runner out for India. Batch, Hazelhurst and Davies and that's in the net. No disallowed for, for a, uh, I think, umpire pit rule that the ball was moving before the shot at goal. He certainly blew his whistle before. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Let's watch net. it here on replay. And we'll see if this ball does, in fact, move. Well, 
a little bit technical, I feel, <laughs> there. That's <laughs> Touch and go, possibly, as you say. Very, very technical. Still a chance for the Australians. Well touched inside there, and Charlesworth trying to select a passage through the Indian defence. An appeal by Hazelhurst and Patmore taking it right into the corner on the far side of the field from our commentary position. As we're into the last minute of the first half and there's a far again breaking. Still plenty of Australian defenders back again. It's with Shaheed. Shaheed showing glorious work off the stick, but unfortunately it came off the foot of Zafar, fortunately for the Australian defenders. And the pressure is eased. And possibly a nil-all scoreline at half-time. Is looking at us at the moment. Last chance for the Indians. Shaheed keen to take it. And it's back with Rajinder. Fernandez and now Shahid. Fernandez again. No one's there. A bad mistake. And Jala Luton had a real opportunity then to put the first score on the board. He but turned. I think he, he had turned, more time. Yes, than, he, uh, he, he turned in front of the player, which is an obstruction in hockey. Shahid. Trying to work the passage again with. Zafar, the Indian captain, <laughs> and as the halftime horn sounds, nil all here at the State Hockey Centre, and plenty of uh, enterprising attack, but as yet no score. No, I think India need to uh, perhaps try and toss the ball through more. They they go very very flat across the, the front of the Australian defence. Australia have definitely had the better of that half, and I I would think that Australia could go on and win this game. Best performance for Australia so far? Well, I'd have to say that uh, David Bell's played very, very well at right half. Peter Hazelhurst and uh, Colin Batch has also given them a lot of trouble up, uh, up, up the front. And uh, we'll be returning to the hockey shortly as we're watching the Australian team taking some well-earned refreshment. The hoses are coming out into the field here at the State Hockey Centre to water down the the turf, the Astro turf, and uh, pretty soon after the hockey, after the second half, we'll be going to Sydney nationally for the Rugby Union Grand Final today up there between Randwick and Manly. And to set the scene, here's Gordon Bray. Thanks very much, Peter. And just under 90 minutes away from the start of this year's Grand Final between the Premier's Randwick, who are also the Australian club champions, and the challenges this year, a very strong Manly lineup. Ramwick is chasing a record sixth first grade premiership in a row. They really do have a very proud record. Also chasing their 18th first grade premiership victory since the club started some 60 years ago. Manly, on the other hand, have not won a first grade premiership since 1950. So it's been a 33 year drought for them. But these two sides are unquestionably the two top sides in Sydney Rugby Union this year. Let's now reflect on some of the action from previous clashes between the two sides this season. In the first round clash, both sides were below full strength, with Ramwick running out winners by 22 points to nine. And here, number 14, Damian Brown, scores one of his three tries. Is he over? It's a try! Whiteman, in the second round at Manly Oval, it was an exciting 20-all draw after the big Manly forward pack had dominated in the first half. This try goes to the big number eight, Ross Reynolds. Reynolds, yes! Big Ross Reynolds. Most people are suggesting that today's grand final between Ramwick and Manly will be the grand final of the decade. And Ramwick certainly have turned in some tremendous performances in their five premiership victories so far. But also, it could easily be one of the greatest grand finals of all time. Ramwick are fielding the three famous Ella brothers with Mark Ella the captain, the Australian captain also. And Manly also have a very big forward pack. So we're looking forward to this big telecast this afternoon. That's it from the Sydney Sports Ground as we now take you back to the State Hockey Centre, Peter Wilkins in Melbourne. Welcome back to the State Hockey Centre. We're still in the half-time break. The first of two internationals here between Australia and India. The score 
nil all and a second half to come of 35 minutes duration. No extra time though if the scores are level at full time. Well, just shortly before the break, we saw the Australians actually have the ball in the back of the net from a penalty corner, but it was disallowed by the umpire and uh, really the Australians possibly a little unlucky. Mal. Well, he blew it for the ball not being stopped properly. Let's have a look at it. It did move out of the... Well, that's an interesting one. It, uh, it definitely wasn't stopped initially by uh, Hazelhurst, but the rule states that it should be stopped before the shot at goal. Now, the interpretation is whether, in fact, that ball had stopped moving when Davies hit it into the net. Uh, again, very, very technical, but in uh, defence of Ian Pitt, it is a very, very hard uh, rule to umpire and probably one of the most controversial rules in the game at the moment. And I, I believe that something needs to be done to clear that uh, particular rule up. Well, what would you suggest to you? Well, I'm, An I'm umpire up here in the commentary <laughs> position, perhaps. It's certainly, well, maybe if he could have the benefit of the replay as we did. But uh, probably from his position, it, it definitely moved. So I would say that uh, he, he probably made a good decision at the time. Well, it really is a tough life being an umpire in all sports these days with the advent of the action replay, the slow motion replay. And, uh, well, you're an umpire over in Perth, Mel, and how do you find it? Well, I think uh, hockey is a, is a particularly technical game and we can't get away from that. And uh, it's a smaller field than, say, a soccer field and or a football field. and. And with 22 players out there, often it gets very, very congested. And with uh, with a small ball, it is very, very hard to see it uh, at a number of times. Yes, and uh, a very difficult job indeed, being an umpire. Well, it's still half time. The players are having a rest, and on the field at the moment, we're watching the the juniors in action. Uh, in what's known as Mickey Hockey, and to tell us a bit more about it, the National Coaching Director, Ivan Spedding. Welcome, uh, Ivan. Can you just tell us uh, the advent of the Mickey Hockey? Well, Mickey Hockey, as uh, Mel just mentioned, uh, hockey, like all other sports at adult level, can be a bit technical, and uh, here we've uh, modified the sport to suit children of uh, primary school age. We've modified the facilities and the equipment. You'll see here that they're playing on just a quarter of the hockey pitch. We can, uh, this game can be played on a, a netball or a basketball pitch or something like that. We've reduced the number of players so that there's only six per side and that means that the children have more uh, involvement in the game each and so they have opportunity to learn the, squil the skills better and quicker. And we've abandoned the specialist roles. You'll see there's no goalkeepers there and the children move around and they're indeed playing attacking roles, defending roles and they get an opportunity <laughs> to, to uh, try out every uh, aspect of the game. Well, often as a, as a junior, it can get fairly lonely if you're a fullback on one of those uh, big fields that they play on sometimes. So in that respect, uh, and you can see it, that the, all the players are involved. Yes, well, it can get a lot more lonely as a left winger. I can vouch for that <laughs> as an ex-left uh, winger. One of the other things uh, that we've done is take the competition out of the game. Now, uh, I won't say it's not important uh, for kids of this age that they don't win, but uh, winning's important, but it's nowhere near as important as it is to we adults, and uh, they place far more importance on things like having an opportunity to learn the skills and just having fun with their mates. So we've tried to create uh, the environment that they want. Well, I was uh, wondering along the benches and through the crowd just before the, the Australia-India match and I heard one junior who was watching a, a Mickey hockey game on before this game say uh, indignantly, oh, there's, there's not much skill out there, but, uh, well, he was watching and surely this is where the skill is developed for the youngsters. Yes, that's true, and I think encouraged, uh, where the skill is encouraged because uh, as uh, people, as specialists in, you know, uh, in skill acquisition will tell you that uh, once, uh, particularly uh, uh, at a young age, once players learn a skill, they get a sense of achievement and they want to go on and learn something more. So you're, you're uh, motivating the children to improve their skills and not just in hockey, but in all ways. Well, how widely is this played, uh, Ivan, at the it's moment? It's been uh, played uh, in lots of uh, areas of Australia, but it hasn't been coordinated from a national level. It's been called mini hockey, macro hockey, micro hockey, or all those sort of names and we've given it uh, the name of Minky which is an abbreviation of mini hockey and we've uh, 
published a, a, a national uh, guidebook and we're trying to coordinate the effort nationally. All right, Ivan. Ivan Spedding, the National Coaching Director. Thanks very much for that enlightenment Thank on uh, Minky Hockey and we certainly hope the juniors go on to bigger and better things. Thanks. Mal, what are your thoughts on the, the Mickey hockey? Not a bad idea? I think it's a marvellous idea, I really do. Uh, obviously, that, some of those uh, children that are playing there look very, very young indeed, but uh, it's good to see them out there just having a run around without worrying about too much about the, the technicalities of the rules and, uh, and, as Ivan said, worrying about whether they're going to win or not. <laughs> and the big and the small there. Possible future internationals for Australia. And in the background the ones that are there in the box seat at the moment and uh, heading towards the Olympic Games of course next year and with their great performances internationally in recent times the Australians would uh, almost have to be favourites to win. Well I I'm sure that, uh, that they would be favourites but at the same time um, they could play very very well up until the Olympics, they could play well right through the Olympics and of course uh, Lose, lose the game on one decision in, in the recent World Cup in 1982. Australia were undefeated right through the qualifying games, played Germany in the, the semi-final and in fact they, they drew with Germany and the game came down to, uh, to penalty strokes to decide the game and Australia lost the game on penalty strokes and it was the only game they lost uh, and they finished third and yet uh, technically they didn't lose a game. Um, so there's, a, there's that element of luck that comes into every sport and uh, I'm sure Australia will need that if they're going to win a, a gold medal at the Olympics. Yes, it'll be certainly disappointing to lose an affair on penalty strokes. Uh. Well, that, that's, that's the case, but uh, we must remember, of course, that in 76 in Montreal, Australia, in fact, put India out of the, the semi-finals on that, uh, that very thing on penalty strokes. So the score still nil all. And uh, we're just about to see the pass back for the restart of play. The Indians to date uh, showing the most enterprise down the left-hand side of the field, but uh, the Australians in the first half have looked the, the better team, we should say. Australia are definitely more direct than India. India have got very, very clever, close skills, but they, as I said just before the... Uh the half-time break, they tend to go too flat across the field instead of trying to pass the ball through the Australian defence. The, the passes that really caused India a lot of trouble were the balls that, uh, that were fed through to Colin Batch in particular from Australia's uh, defence. There's the whistle for the start of the second half here at the State Hockey Centre in Melbourne. On what is a cloudy day, the wind picking up a little. preliminary final day in the VFL here in Melbourne and a grand final day in the Rugby Union in Sydney at telecast later on this afternoon coming to you live from Sydney Charlesworth blown for an obstruction in the middle of the field there again a very technical one Hazelhurst Neat pass back inside. Finding Smith and now it's Davies away to Charlesworth, although intercepted by Vanit. And wide it goes to the number 11, Zafar. Some good defence again back there by the Australians in the form of Jim Irvine, 34 years of age, 134 internationals behind him, and that's a lot of international hockey matches. Hazelhurst getting through a power of work today, getting back there in defence. That's with the Indians now midfield and wide to Samaya. That's a good ball from Samaya, fighting Shahid, one of the danger men, Shahid. Back inside into the circle. Oh, brilliantly cut out though by Jim Irvine. Picked his moment and executed the interception just at the right moment to put Australia back on the attack again. Charlesworth over halfway. Now right into the danger zone. A chance here for the Australians. Not taken though by Charlesworth as that fine cross ball came in from college. And the Indians breaking through Fernandez. Jala Ludden and a beautiful 
through ball there for Shaheed. It looked like a bit of an obstruction. A quickly taken free hit. A drive then from Fernandes, blocked though by the Australians, and the pressure eased. It's a corner, and they have a time, a chance to regroup in defence. And under a bit of pressure there, a couple of nice passes from the Indians. A hesitation in the Australian defence. It could have been costly. A little bit awkward there for the goalkeeper Pratt. The ball was. Uh, bouncing quite nastily there. So another corner. Shot! An unlucky off David Bell's foot there for a penalty corner. The Indians in fact uh, leading up to that corner they, they showed a lot more uh, a lot more positive play by going forward. Check of the ball from the up bar, doesn't like it, throws it away. And we'll have a look at another one. <laughs> and there's another ball out onto the field. I think that's the third. So the Indians. a solid slap and that's a goal and that's first blood to the Indians. One mil, a fine penalty stroke there. Yes, a good drive by Vermeet. Well, well stopped. And powered it in off the foot of the Australian defender Bill. He couldn't keep it out and so one nil to the Indians and a setback for the Australians. They'll just have to go all out in attack now. And, uh, well, a goal against the run of play almost throughout the Well, game. it was, but uh, at the same time, India have looked a little bit more promising this half. David Bell might be a little bit disappointed that he didn't stop that corner. He was right in position for it, but maybe he was unsighted by the goalkeeper. A satisfied Indian bench at the moment. Looked like it came off the foot of Davies. It did so. Indians once again exerting pressure. All the way goes Shahid. Can he get it back? No. Over the goal line it goes. And a relieving free hit for the Australians. And the Indians spurred on somewhat by that goal. Coming about three and a half minutes into the second half. After there was no score in the first half. I think that's what the game needed. Uh, to spark it up a bit. I'm sure we'll see a, a little bit of extra effort from now from the Australian team. The Indians doing a lot of running at the moment. And in particular, Shahid, he's been everywhere today. Number 10. Now we're watching Rajinder and the Australians have a battle royal as it comes clear to Peter Hazelhurst. And through to the Indians. Fernandez, wide as Jalaluddin. Elects to go back inside. A lot of space there. Fernandez, now it comes to Jalaluddin. Can't get around. Trevor King and another promising move from the Indians. Well, the Australia's going to have moment. to lift their game at the moment because the Indians are now starting to get hold of this game and uh, looking very, very busy in particular in midfield. That goal has certainly given them added confidence. Charles Worth didn't quite get it wide then to Patmore. Patmore's still there group of Indian defenders back there as well. And Trevor King will restart the play to Davies. Crunch. All the way. It's noticeable this half that the Australian forwards just haven't been able to, to quite get control of that ball and a number of uh, moves have broken down very, very early and let the Indians come back at them. Fernandez. Fine ball cross field to Shahid but Batch was back there doing a bit of a defensive work and Charlesworth Another example there, that ball Charlesworth might normally have trapped just slid off the end of his stick. Hazelhurst. It looks very much as if Charlesworth is playing centre forward at the moment and bats right inside. Hey, come on! 
<laughs> Bit of time wasting there from the Indians who thought perhaps uh, they should have had the free hit or should have been 10 metres back, but King back to Davies. The long pass is not coming off at the moment for the Australians. And Vanit breaking left side of the field, or is it Rajinder, I think? Yes, back inside it goes to Zafar and now Fernandez. Oh, that Fernandez. Was, well, well played, Trevor King. He just got a stick in there to deflect that ball over the sideline. Shahid missing that fine cross from Jalaluddin. It had a lot of power on it. Back in the Australian defence with Bell. Charles Worth is also back there. And Shahid again. Some desperate defensive work from the Australians. Bell doesn't clear it effectively. Charles Worth is back there. Samaya so out wide to Jalaluddin. And it's with Jalaluddin. Samaya. So Just a touch forward to Charles Worth. Setting in college on a long run downfield and uh, putting the ball back in the Indians' court where the Australians would like to play it. And Charlesworth. Into the circle goes Charlesworth. Can't find his man. Hazelhurst just missed it. And the Indians again coming away and looking dangerous. And the Australians just not putting it together in the final quarter of the field. And of course, that's where it counts in the circle. 1 0 the score. We've had nine minutes of play in the second half here at the State Hockey Centre in Melbourne. Coming to you on ABC Sport, right round Australia. King. Well, there's a, a sense of urgency creeping into Australia's game now as they realise they must uh, lift the tempo of this game as India's taken it right away from them. Charles Worth. All the Indians back in defence at the moment. Still Charles Worth. He's going to take them all on. Obstruction by Charles with unlucky, he couldn't stop his uh, movement there. The Indians uh, preferring, of course, to play it down the Australian end of the field, and Charles Worth, a good piece of play from him then. Saw all the Indians were back and said, Well, I'll take you on at this stage. Jala Luddin now combining with Fernandez, cross field to Shahid. Shahid, some dazzling stick play. Could go all the way. A fine cross and it's in. Sword. Goal number two for the Indians. Yes, Brilliant. Shahid, a fine piece of work. Brilliant play by Shahid then. And the Indian forwards are really starting to turn the Australian defence inside out. Let's watch this again. Fine play from Shahid. Well, possibly that should have been saved by the goalkeeper. But uh, nevertheless, we can't take that away from Shahid there but again that move started by an interception midfield by by number eight for India Fernandez who passed on to Shahid well, the game has turned around completely a first half in which the Australians were unlucky not to score after having the ball in the back from uh, in the back of the net from a penalty corner and now the Indians have provided most of the pressure and also have come up with two goals to lead Australia 2-0 and we've had 10 minutes of play in the second half. Topno forward to Hardeep. Back there was Roger Smith. It's with Hardeep and now Shahid again. Fernandez. Jala Ludden. Good defensive work then from Trevor King. It's back with Jala Luddin again, though, a dangerous player. Cross it goes, and flashing in there was the Indian captain Zafar, and it could easily have been 3 0. Some very, very indecisive play by Australian defence, and they're going to have to take charge back there. <laughs> Off the foot, and uh, an unfortunate mistake once again for the Australians. Well, for some reason that uh, I, I just can't work out, they, they seem to have completely switched off this half and uh, there's no doubt that India have taken total charge of this game. If they score here, I, I suggest Australia will be very, very hard pressed to get it back. 
So Vanit has already scored once from the penalty corner and there's another one. 3-0 to India. And that's two from the penalty well, corner situation by Vanit and the Australians. Drive. Maybe some dispute about the height, but uh, normally the boards are the accepted height, and that was probably going below the height of the boards until the Australian fullback, I think Irvine, deflected it up higher. Well, can the Australians fight their way back into the match? Batch has been strangely quiet in the second half after really dominating up front in the first half, and that change of positions. Uh, I think, you'll find, of attitude. I think you'll find soon that uh, Australia might make a change. They definitely need more bite up in the centre of the field. And I wouldn't be surprised to see Terry Walsh or perhaps David Francis come on very, very soon. A bit of a casualty there on the Australian bench. Uh, I think he's doing his warming up exercises <laughs> and it might be, uh, I think that was Terry Walsh. Yes, Terry Walsh is warming up for Australia. So indeed, uh, a good prediction. Well, in fact, Terry Walsh and David Francis are warming up, so he might see a double change by uh, coach Richard Agus. Hazelhurst to Patmore. But again, the Indians break free. They chip forward. And that served them effectively, and that they've put the ball back down the Australian end of the field. And uh, from two such occasions, penalty corners have arisen, and uh, at both occasions, the ball has gone to the back of the net. 3 0 the score. And still the Indians dominating play here in the second half. Have to score very soon to get back in the match. Hazelhurst back to Charlesworth. Patmore's there, can't find his man, cleared away and the Indians have it, although it could be a free hit to the Australians for an infringement just outside the circle. Taken by Smith and almost oh, a deflection shot. from Batch. Well, they needed that and good goalkeeping on that occasion by James for India. Well read. <laughs> and a stick trip for Fernandez for his troubles. For being one of the best players on the field in this second half. 3-0. That chip forward again looking for Zafar. And Zafar making a lot of ground but Davies Watching it closely, and yes, good play from Davies. Trying the one-two. The Indians far quicker to the ball at the moment. That's, I think you've summed it up there, uh, Peter. They're a lot, lot quicker. They're frustrating the Australians. Back tackling. It's Terry Walsh ready to come on there for Australia. He's still got that, uh, that knee trouble, apparently cruciate trouble. Always plays very heavily strapped. Hazelhurst try to clear the centre of the field. Again, too many Indians there for him in the shape of Samaya and also Jala Ludden. And it takes uh, three Australian defenders to come up with it once again. Hazelhurst, a good challenge by Hardeep. It was an illegal one. And now it's with Davies. Elects to go way across field. Not controlled by Bell. He'll be disappointed with that. Well, that seems to be the story of Australia's game today. They're just uh, letting far too many uncontested balls slide off their stick. And another careless mistake. And Shahid, you can't give this man the ball. He's already shown some fantastic skill on the stick. And it's with Samaya. Samaya thinks he can take the Australian defence on too. And he's hurt himself a corner or a free hit just outside the circle. Try a, a flick in then from Fernandez. It almost came off. The Australians, again, a bit of desperate defence as we're seeing to be robbed of the ball on more occasions. Crossfield it goes. And Zafar can't quite get the ball in. Hazelhurst clearing for Australia, trying to take the man on again, earns the free hit and a relieving one at that. And Here's the, the substitution being made for Australia. Two players, and it's the two we picked before. Six is David Francis, and the number 16 is Terry Walsh. 
both West Australians, although David Francis originally from South Australia. On, the players taken off the college in Hazelhurst. Well, from memory, it was Walsh who scored a couple here in the, well, the Walsh, final last that's year. That's right. Terry Walsh scored four goals, but uh, I think he'll be battling to do that to, today. <laughs> the Indians have really got their tails up now. Some aggressive stick work there. The Australians into the circle. <laughs> a speculating left foot drive from Romeo James. crowd not liking the way the Australians are approaching their attack in the circle at the moment and they're giving them a bit of a razz on that occasion. It's 3-0 and time running out in the second half. Just over 17 minutes to go and there's uh, no extra time if scores are tied, although at this point in time that looks extremely unlikely. It was well read by Irvine back in defence. Uh, Cut out that cross and now it's with Batch. Batch not as effective as he was in the first half, playing a bit deeper. And perhaps that's what the Australians are missing at the moment. Someone up there to take the Indians on. I'm sure you're right there, Peter. Australia stopped giving that ball through to the, to the player leading up front and uh, they have been very, very ineffectual in attack this half. Mind you, we have to give credit to the Indians. I believe they've defended exceptionally well today, particularly their two fullbacks, Topno and Vanit. A little bit of aggression between Fernandez and Davies. And Fernandez, one of two really dominating forces in the midfield for the Indians, the other being Shahid and presenting lots of problems for the Australian midfield and defence. And it's with Bell attempting to put the Australians back into an attacking situation. Bell again, and first to the ball, once again, is the Indian side. A very comfortable lead, and it looks like being advanced once again through Shahid. Wide it goes to Hardeep. Hardeep on the ball. Back to Shahid, a free hit. Now it's with Samaya. Jalaluddin. India now showing all the skills of uh, being able to hold the ball which we came to to know them for and uh, I think Australia have, have let them get confident in that. Well cut out by Charlesworth, well read. Can he put the Australians onto the attack? Batch has to recover. He does so but look at the Indian defenders even though they use foul means to bring him down it will enable the defense a chance to get back and uh, as we can see on that occasion batch all on his own surrounded by three indian defenders the story of the second half well the umpire blew that for the leading to dangerous play and it has to come right back where david bell tossed the ball over the top Desperate appeal for the free hit. Not successful from Fernandez. He thought that Davies played that too high. Must have been, I thought it was a little bit high. Davies. Not finding the man once again. Some scrappy play in the middle of the park. Samaya. Attempting to get control of the situation again. Samaya. Batch, neat work from Batch. Charlesworth was inside, Bell was outside. We haven't really seen the replacements in the game as yet. Charlesworth, working the left hand side. A loss of stick there from one of the Indians. It doesn't uh, matter that much as they come away with it once again. Patmore easily surrounded by J. 
Jala Luden. So 3-0 the score and uh, not long to go in the second half, the first of two internationals here in Melbourne at the State Hockey Centre. 3-0 with just over 13 minutes to go in the match. Another example of how, how Colin Batch couldn't trap that. Normally Australia very, very sharp on that sort of thing. Shahid always looking at danger on the ball. And again, trying to go all the way. He's shown his want to take on the Australian defenders. He's earned a corner. And another goal here would uh, probably lead it to embarrassing proportions for the Australians. Because well, I uh, think it's already a little <laughs> bit embarrassing for the Australians. Unless they can uh, pull a couple back, I, I think they'll be very, very hard pressed to win from here. Davies. And well left in defence by Topno. And the free hit. Interesting feature of today's game is we've had very, very little right wing attack from Australia. And when we, we defeated India 6-1 in the, the tournament last year, our right wing was a dominant player. Zafar working the left side. Yet again, trying to find Fernandez, not successful with Roger Smith cutting it out. Not a good ball though, once again. And there's plenty of time for the Indian defence to punch it up into the attack again. As they work the right hand side of the field, the closest to our commentary position and the Australians desperately looking for a goal. Smith. And one of the first touches of the ball for Francis. Here, Australia have to try and find it a little bit more. David Francis on the right wing. He's fresh and he's very, very quick and dangerous when he gets hold of that ball. Batch. The Indians are looking as though they want to protect this lead. 3 0. And with uh, little mistakes like that, they're, they're sure to, I'd imagine, with the, the ball back with King. Some sort of infringement there. No, umpire Pitt was just insisting that the free hit be taken where, where the breach occurred. Yes, the Indians have shown a lot more imagination in the second half, pushing the ball right and left to their strengths of Jala Luton and their captain Zafar. While the Australians just haven't shown the same imagination in attack. And that's why the scoreline reads, India 3, Australia nil. just over 10 minutes to go. And certainly a goal was wanted by the Australians. It's Jim Irvine pushing forward, everyone pushing forward. And Smith there doing a bit of heavy work. <laughs> and things getting a little tense out there as the Australians really struggling to find a way through the Indian defence. Francis can't get past Rajinder. <laughs> he almost lobbed in. Yes, with six or seven Australian attackers in the circle on that occasion. Uh, certainly keen to get the ball across, but they couldn't do so because of astute Indian defence. And we're watching Jala Luden punch forward, and this could easily be number four for the Indians. But for, fell fortunately for Samaya. Uh, possibly he should have stretched it a little wider instead of just playing the short touch, although they still have the advantage. Yes, I think you're right, but a brilliant run again by Jala Luden and turned uh, Davies completely in a very, very small area, but the final pass wasn't good. That's still a dangerous situation for India. Oh. 
Samaya is there, possibly looking for the deflection. Uh, didn't quite have the power on it that was desired. And Charlesworth of Australia. King. In the centre, Smith. Wide to Bell. Batch. Bell. Smith. And Jala Ludden. There's Walsh. Keen to get to the ball, just uh, well, not a, a yard slower than he was last year, but he might have lost a fraction of that pace. And certainly that's what Australia are needing up front at the moment, a lot of pace and a lot of luck as we're into the last 10 minutes of the game. In fact, just under eight minutes to go. After 35 minutes, there was no score. But in the third minute of the second half, India went ahead 1-0 through a penalty corner. They went ahead 2-0 after 10 minutes with uh, a magnificent individual effort from Shahid. And after 13 uh, minutes of the second half, it was another penalty corner. Well, the Australians need a miracle now. And there's another unforced error. Very, very uncharacteristic of uh, the Australian players today. Offside. Well, not, he didn't seem to be directly involved in the play, but uh, the offside called. Charles Worth. This batch a little fortunate to get the ball back again. Charlesworth and a good Walsh tackle also. again by Vanit. Hazelhurst were in the centre there. The Indians sprinting clear. Centre field through Shahid and Zafar. Shahid running left. Zafar elects to go the other way and a great ball across field. A little too pacey on the bounce for Jaladuddin and it caught him just on the kneecap. A solid blow. So a little sting uh, has gone out of the match with the result uh, looking certainly like it's going towards India. Three goals on the board at the moment. The Australians trying to salvage some pride. And there's Batch. It's Charlesworth. Can they get on the board? Not as yet. And it's out. And the restart to be taken by Trevor King. So and uh, certainly the Australians with just over five minutes to go will need to push everyone up into the attack, one would feel. Uh, things just aren't bouncing their way, they aren't uh, first to the ball, the Indians are far more aggressive and a few more ideas. Still, it's the first of four internationals, one again tomorrow coming to you live on ABC TV from Melbourne. And let's hope uh, better in store for the Australians, who at one stage uh, looked the better team in this match. In fact, for most of the first half, they looked the better team, were unlucky not to score. And now, with a shade over four minutes to go, they find themselves down 3-0 and having not too many answers for a very talented Indian side that has really put it together in the second half. Can the Australians get on the board now? Charlesworth. Possibly should have looked out wide where unmarked was Patmore. But the mistakes like that have seen the Indians back in the attack as they are once again through the captain Zafar. Colin Bell and also, or rather, David Bell and 
Batch uh, preventing him going any further as Batch coming away with it and he's looking like he wants to go all the way with it. Uh, the sheer weight of numbers in the Indian defence. There were six back there compared with two Australian attackers and uh, no options for him as Charlesworth into the circle he goes. Yeah, it's another good doesn't tackle. Free. We've, yes. we've got to give a great deal of credit to the Indians. I believe they've tackled superbly in, in their deep defence and uh, really frustrated the Australian forwards today. Jala Luden. <laughs> He'd made up his mind where he wanted to go, straight through the middle of the two Australians. And he got the free hit. It's back <laughs> Australia's way now as the number 12, Hardeep, tries to give Roger Smith a bear hug. Centre field. And that's with Jala Luden. Not on that occasion can he find the way through. Charlesworth, likewise, can't do the same. And now it's with Jala Luden again. A bit of obstruction there from Trevor King. Although, uh, really, he couldn't get out of the way, I think. Good tackle on that occasion. Time almost up for the Australians to put a score on the board. And just over two minutes to go. And three goals down. Well, that should have been Australia's way. And it's very much looking as though it's going to be the final score line here at the State Hockey Centre. And the Indians are uh, wanting very much to protect that margin and get off to a good start in this four international series. Two in Melbourne and two next week in Perth. Walsh Fort familiar fighting Francis, uh, who tried well, to drive. A good shot by Francis, but another magnificent save by the Indian keeper James. And the two replacements working Australia into a good position there late in the second half. Down three goals, but again they can't convert the pressure into a score. And look at this man go down the left-hand flank. Zafar, he's left one without his stick. The cross is there. The Australians better make sure they clear it. Because out wide was Jala Luton and advancing midfield was Fernandez. Charlesworth now. Things a little more open coming near the end of the game. And it's with Walsh. Can the Australians score? Walsh wide to Patmore. Patmore, surely a chance for the Australians. But back there well was Cavalho. And what was really the first scoring opportunity for the Australians in the second half, apart from that shot just a moment ago. Jala Luton breaking again. There's no one with him. And well robbed by Davies. Shahid. And as the full-time siren goes, signalling a victory to the Indians, avenging their defeats in the Malaysian tournament. By three goals to one, they've beaten Australia 3-0 with goals coming from penalty corners, two of them by Vineet Kumar after 38 minutes and again after 47 minutes and two minutes before that last penalty corner goal. Shahid, a brilliant piece of individual skill, made it 2-0. So 3-0, the final score. Australia going down to India and for his comments, Malcolm Pearl. Well, a very, very disappointing game for Australia, obviously. But uh, full credit to the Indians, they tackled Australia, they frustrated them, they never allowed the Australian forwards to get control of the game. I think a fact which was compounded by the Australian forwards failing to, uh, to trap the ball cleanly. Many of the basic skills of players we come to expect, uh, such as Charlesworth and so on, just weren't there today. And it was uh, in fact very encouraging to see India do so well from some of the ex and old style hockey skills.
On their behalf, I believe uh, players such as Fernandes in particular and Shahid did a great deal of damage. But uh, we shouldn't forget their defence. Topno, Vinit Kumar, the, the fullbacks, I think played a very, very ex excellent game in defence for India. A section of the crowds are very, very pleased to. Uh, Indian supporters in the crowd today and a very disappointed Australian bench and I'm sure that uh, coach Richard Agus will do a lot of soul searching tonight. We'll have a look at that, uh, the first goal the Indians scored in a moment. It's coming up. Penalty corner from Vineet. A good stop, good drive. David Bell maybe had a chance to stop that. Didn't have his stick quite flat in the ground and you can see him uh, looking in anguish there as he realises that maybe he should have stopped that penalty corner and that's what he's there for. Well, I'm sure that tomorrow we might see some changes in the Australian lineup. I feel perhaps they didn't get quite enough drive from the centre half and uh, maybe that's understandable. Roger Smith, centre half for Australia, fairly inexperienced player but uh, I would think maybe David Bell might, might have a run there at centre half tomorrow and now we'll, we'll cross uh, for an interview uh, with Peter Wilkins with uh, the Indian manager thanks Mel well with me the manager of the Indian team and also the coach Bal Christian Singh Bal uh, a great second half performance from the team what did you say to the players at half time when uh, they didn't look really in it in the first half uh, first half, in fact, uh, we are playing on Estrada for after quite a long time because we were uh, in New Zealand, we were playing on grass. And um, it took, took them a little time to settle down because um, the great game here is completely different than what you play on grass. Um, that is why in the second half we could, uh, you know, sort of uh, get adjusted uh, to the Estrada and they played well, yes. Do you think this uh, could mark a, another resurgence in Indian hockey? Things over the last few years haven't gone all that well for you, so uh, possibly a resurgence. Yes, um, in fact that is why we have come to Australia. We are building up a new team and um, in fact all these matches that we will be playing here, um, they are sort of build up uh, matches and uh, I think today's win will give a lot of confidence to my young players. And in fact I am very grateful uh, to the Australian Hockey Association and uh, Isanda for uh, uh, sponsoring this trip for us because uh, this trip will do a lot of good to my my team. And you've got a, a lot of fine players in the side at the moment, particularly the, the danger men out in the left and right hand sides of the field in uh, your captain Zafar and in the midfield Fernandez and also on the right and Njala Ludden. Have you got uh, many more of these players coming um, up in India? Oh uh, yes, yes we have some more players um, like this. Um, but they are the best that we have at the moment, but uh, we have three, four more players who couldn't make the trip. Uh, but that, that's not the thing, in fact. The uh, main thing is that uh, I want to give experience, a lot of experience to these players, and uh, uh, Australia is uh, today one of the best teams in the world, so it will be a great experience for us. Well, thanks very much uh, for talking with us, and good luck for the rest of the series. Thank you. Bal Christian Singh, the manager and coach of the Indian team, will be back again tomorrow with match two in the four international series, Australia and India, a convincing win today to the Indians by three goals to nil. Peter Wilkins on behalf of Malcolm Poole for ABC Sport.